people are constantly raising the bar. Sacrifices need mm. to be made. What would you guys say are your biggest weaknesses? You or your enemy right now? It's success of life. Just a fucking podcast. Hey guys, welcome to the Student Side Hustle. This week I'm speaking to Doug Grant. So I've known Doug for quite a while actually. We We were friends way back in like year three like i don't know we were young as fuck like we were really young um so doug you're an actor and you also have i guess a patches company so you sell patches which i think is quite a cool thing because it's a kind of thing where it's kind of like i feel like there's a lot of people that say oh i'm gonna do that but not many people actually do it Mm. and i really like how you've actually capitalized on it and done it really really well like your marketing's on point and the patches are all really creative and like they're quite aesthetic to look at Mm. How did you get into acting, being creative, and all that sort of stuff? Uh, well, I've always been a creative person. Like yeah. When I was little, I used to have a big table that was just full of paper, coloring pencils, stencils, stamps, whatever, like everything, yeah. like every single felt tip, like the metallic ones, yeah, everything. And I would just sit there and draw, and my mum would like try to get me to do puzzles, yeah. but I would just leave and start drawing or something. <laughs> yeah. Just, and it's like being creative is just kind of what I've always been about. Yeah. And so I guess getting into acting and getting into patches and um, that was just kind of a natural step for me. It was, mm. a, it was uh, yeah, just the progression of wanting to find yeah. something to fill my time with, something yeah. that I enjoy yeah. and just a creative outlet. That's like mm. the most important thing yeah. for me is like having, uh, yeah, time to like let all my creative juices flow (laughs) yeah i feel that definitely what made you like sort of realize that like being an active actor is a possibility because everyone sees it as this scary thing that's like oh only leonardo dicaprio can be an actor like all these things but it's like you have gone and done it even though it's such a scary thing what how did you go and do that um i I literally just did it i (laughs) I went to some like workshop some like little summer schooly type thing and I just did it and I think anyone who wants to be an actor Mm. who's acting in high school they're an actor right now they're an Mm. actress whatever they can like they can do it and I think um yeah it's it's not it's not it is it is a scary thing but Mm. I think the scariest thing is kind of uh imagining this star quality or like this like the top of the top or when you think of actors you 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 do think of people like Leonardo DiCaprio or like the latest people who won the oscars yeah. are like crazy you you, yeah. you think of that kind of achievement and that success mm. and it's kind of hard to put yourself into perspective against that mm. um and i think it's just about knowing that you are i don't know acting and however you're doing that like mm. it could be a hundred million different ways yeah and as long as you're enjoying it and you're doing it i think you're an actor and yeah that's yeah it. i feel like it's more simple than people make it out to be like people make it out to be the scary thing but yeah. as you said like just going and doing it and mm. i think that's one of the keys what do you think is like sort of one of the keys to actually going and doing it because do you start by doing just sort of high school plays or do you just start by making a home videos or whatever like how did you start and how would you recommend people get into it um i think i actually started in year six i did some little acting after school stuff and that was you know when you were a kid and you yeah your parents were like oh would you like to try this class <laughs> like yeah um, i had one of those upbringings and um just i guess i was given that opportunity when i was young and it kind of i just did some little school plays mm. and stuff yeah but it wasn't until about year 11 or so when yeah. i was like oh i really yeah. i really love this I, this is so much fun yeah i just want to do this i want this to be my hobby and yeah I guess that's how careers happen, right? <laughs> yeah, I definitely find, like, I noticed all throughout high school, there was this, I think it was in year 13, where there was one character you were playing, it was, I think we were, it was emceeing something, yeah. and you were playing, I think it was an old guy, and I was oh, pissing yeah. myself laughing <laughs> in the crowd. How do you go about playing a character, and, like, how do you, like, we always hear of all these weird things, like, oh, blah blah actor went and slept in a hotel for 27 years to yeah, become yeah. this actor like yeah right yeah i think it's just about committing and like being fearless and yeah being um confident in yourself yeah because i think if someone does it half-heartedly mm. it's going to not be that great it's going to be yeah. lame it's going to like 
you're you're gonna feel like slightly embarrassed mm. and, as an audience member. Yeah. Like if you watch someone that's like not fully in it, mm. it's immediately you like pull away from them. Yeah. But even if you're even if you're like pretty shit. Yeah. And you fully commit and you have a great time. Yeah. The audience doesn't care. Like yeah. as long as they're seeing that you're putting in the energy mm. and you're committing and you're having a good time, the audience is gonna have a good time. And yeah. I think yeah, it just comes down to being like committed and like really just jumping in there and not hesitating. Yeah, because I think one of your major strengths with this is once you're on stage, you don't, um, I don't know, but it looks, it, it seems as though you couldn't care less what any person in the crowd is thinking of you judging. Even if you're playing a part that's like it's awkward or like yeah. scary to play, Yeah, I feel like that's one of your major strengths. And I think that is, it's such it's so like amazing to see because I think it's so easy for people to feel judged today and it's so mm. easy for people to be scared of doing things and yeah. doing things out there just because it's like, oh, so-and-so will judge me, blah, blah, blah. Do you think your confidence on stage plays a major role? Yeah, definitely. Like, you just need to jump in there and if you jump in mm. there, if you're confident in that, like, yeah. that's going to that's gonna come through in like, the performance or yeah. whatever you're doing and you could be doing the most ridiculous, silly mm. routine yeah. and as long as you're like, yeah. committed and you're like confident in yourself and yeah as you said like don't care about what anyone thinks that's um yeah i think that's so good for the audience to like be involved in that and to mm. be like seeing that yeah do you have any advice for like getting to that level of confidence um um i guess it's just it's just yeah just not holding back I remember I used to like be like I get nervous mm. obviously like everyone does but I remember um having to like get up and 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 come up with a character that you've made in 5 minutes and perform yeah. it in front of this like small group of like amazing kind of theater makers yeah and I remember being really nervous about it and freaking out but I just thought like I've got nothing to lose mm. they're here to help me I'm here to show them like my ability and if I do that half-hearted, they're not going to realize, like, what it could have been or, like, yeah, uh, yeah like, a different path that could have gone down. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's just totally about always jumping in mm. and never hesitating. Yeah. And um, I think that goes for a lot of things as well, like, just generally life mm. is to be confident in what you're doing and mm. to just get in there and just dig yeah. in and just I be assertive. Like that's definitely <laughs> been one of the things that ma has made podcasting so enjoyable to me is because... Like, I, at first, I, when I started doing, like, I first I had, like, a blog, and then I did, like, I don't know, I did some other shit, and then with those, I was always scared of the judgment. Yeah. But the, but the podcast, it doesn't, I couldn't care less anymore. Like, I've yeah. sort of slowly transitioned to this sort of phase of not caring so much. Mm. Do you find that the, do you, like, do you get nervous in things like auditions, or do you sort of just have to put yourself in this mentality of like this is my shot to get this thing and how does that sort of thing go because i would be scared of as like I'd, I'd be scared as hell of doing like that thing when you have one chance or you have one shot yeah. show them who you are yeah and like what you're capable of yeah that is very nerve-wracking and scary but um yeah it, it does come back to that thing of, of committing to it and mm. As long as you're, if you've prepared your audition or something in some way, yeah, is to like really go hard with it and really hit that. And even yeah. if it's not what they're looking for, and yeah. you've showed that level of um, just commitment again, mm. th then they can either say, "Hey, that was real good," mm. but um, what about if you tried it this way? Oh yeah. And so they already know that you have the capability. Yeah. But even if it's not quite right, they can help you and tell you what they're wanting mm. and it's um yeah i think it's just off the bat even if you're nervous just to yeah. always just be just go go hard no matter even if yeah. you think you're going to get it or not do yeah. you find like a lot of the times would is there a lot of situations where you'll be like okay i auditioned didn't get the part mm. but do you find a lot of those people will come back and be like okay he put in everything and then it sort of builds your character and like sort of your reputation in the industry and sort of realizing like that no matter what character you're playing even if you don't get it you at that audition you've put in everything yeah well um it's it, it, even if you're like not quite there um mm. it's 
it, it's more it's more they know who you are and what you can do yeah like uh, just them knowing like you don't want to be known for the guy who just didn't really like didn't really go hard he yeah. was like kind of a little awkward and like yeah. didn't really jump into it and so when you get back in an audition room for something completely different and with those mm. people that if they remember you they're going to remem- remember you for that mm. but if they remember you for doing this crazy thing that mm. was really good but just not what they were looking for you're going to start on like this good page where mm. they've already seen something great and then it's another chance to show mm. them something else do you find it's a lot of the time like the same people holding auditions like do you find it's a very like small community and you sort of have to like get your reputation up in that community or is it generally quite large well it, I, it is quite large but um when you start there's like casting studios and yeah. stuff like that and so when you start going to a lot of them like you you will start to recognize them or it's, it's more prominent in like the theater community because mm. like theater and film are so I don't know they they are very much interlinked but so mm. different. Like with theatre, you definitely like will always like oh you go into a audition room and be like oh hey yeah. I've, I've seen that dude like do yeah. something or like oh I know someone who did a show with them or yeah it's it's there's like this weird kind of uh, like theatre incest you know yeah <laughs> like it's very do you find like is there a big difference between anything television related and anything like not what do you call it, like theatre yeah. sort of related? Like, does that, when you're actually doing it and when you're preparing for it, does it, does it, do you have to prepare differently or is it relatively similar? Yeah, I guess it's always different. I mean, I've done some shows where you don't really know what's going to happen. Mm. Like, there's no way of telling. It's like, a, I've done a one night show where it's yeah. like a dinner party, basically. And there's no way of telling, like, what's going to happen within that three hours around a dinner table yeah. with the audience eating. Like, you don't really, there's a lot of things you can't really, um, you don't really know about what's going to yeah. go down. But in, like, a black box theatre where there's a hundred people that are sitting on seats and they don't really have a part in it, mm. there's a r- real kind of methodical way that it becomes of, like, the way you prepare for that. But yeah. then, like, film and, and television, I guess um, it's always going to be kind of, different just depending on the production and mm. like some like like Shortland Street they're yeah. like renowned for constantly just basically not not rehearsing or, or just going straight into it and just going straight into filming and I guess yeah I think so they're always different they sort environments of, is that quite a common thing or is that like just did, jumping into it yeah because that sounds like like with podcasts you can just riff it and you can just go go ham but yeah like there's always some preparation would there would generally be preparation obviously but yeah. like do you I, find like i assume theater would be the most prepped for yeah i guess so because it is always live and you can't retake and you can't yeah uh, yeah edit it or whatever um and i think with theater it's a real close-knit group of people working mm. to make a live show yeah a great spectacle but with film and television there's so many people that you, you 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 won't even know yeah and there's like a just a much larger group that is a bit more kind of um yeah not not as interlinked mm. and um like you'll you'll do your acting and you're responsible for that um but within theater it's like more of a yeah it's a group it's a group but. yeah is it more like community and like is that where you'd more likely to be like making real friends in like places like theater just because it is like a smaller, tight-knit group sort of thing? Yeah, I guess it is for me, but that's only because I've had most of my experience in theatre. Mm. Um, but with film, I mean, if uh, people that have done it for years and years and years, and, and, yeah. and they will know everyone. They're, that like The theatre community will probably seem like that's not really their thing anymore. Like, yeah. I guess it's just for me, like I'm just so much more embedded in theatre mm. rather than film and television with why is that for you because i know like for myself i have a very intense preference about like the kind of podcasts i want to make yeah and like the kind of podcasts i listen to and all that sort Mm -hmm. of stuff what makes you sort of choose one sort of job over another sort of job and like one sort of like theater over film all that sort of stuff um well i guess film work is a lot well all work is very um scarce and there's not a lot of it and Mm. a lot of it isn't paid yeah and that's just the nature of it. Yeah. But theatre and f- I mean, um, f- 
film and television and like ads and stuff that's mm. all it's really hard to get it's really yeah. hard to get jobs on there it's yeah. really um you really got to either know people yeah. or you've got to be in the industry for a long time or yeah just get lucky mm. but with theater you can there's quite a lot of like open auditions and yeah like you can do small community theater and that's super accessible for anyone mm. yeah like you could literally go over an audition for something yeah and that's great you're like instantly like in this community you're 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 engaging in theater but with film and television it's kind of a bit more mm. like out of reach yeah is it sort of like almost i guess to say like monopolized like is it sort of like that because i can like you always hear of these people going to la and all trying to get all these <laughs> yeah. things and like all that sort of story yeah is it sort of like when it comes to like film and television and like tv ads like are they a lot harder to get just because it's sort of the same kind of people getting them every time? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's just a harder industry and there's a lot yeah. of things that you have to meet. Like mm. with theatre, it doesn't matter if your nose is a little bit skew with, but yeah. if you go and do a, you audition for an ad and mm. your nose is a little bit skew with, they're yeah. like, oh, hey, sorry, we can't cast you, even though you can do everything. Yeah. And they might get someone who's a, an amazingly beautiful man. Yeah. And... He can't as act as well as the guy with the skew with nose. Yeah. But because he looks beautiful, man, he got the part. Yeah. Do you find like is that like a big part of it? Like, does how much do you think? Because I know like when it comes to things like if we go like to probably the most like performance based sports, it's or like activities, it's like powerlifting. It's it's just about your numbers. That's all it's about. Nothing okay. else. Right. Literally, it's just that. And like any sort of sports, it's all just by your numbers. Yeah. Do you find it's a bit more like subjective in acting? Like it's very, it's it's up to the person the casting sort of thing? Yeah, I guess, well, there's really like a huge team of people. And yeah. Like the producer will like really want a certain look and then there's a director's vision or whatever. And mm. then there's a casting director to like marry everything together. Yeah. And yeah. It's just, there's so many variables. Yeah. And, um, I, like, I think a common misconception is that you have to be like a beautiful person to be in the film and television industry. Yeah. Like you don't have to. It, it it does come down to like technique and ability and, mm. and and confidence and like just generally how good you are. Yeah. But being a beautiful person like it does help a lot yeah. of people. I feel like that would help for getting things like like Leonardo DiCaprio type of roles like yeah. that sort of stuff. But like. I think a great example of that would be Mr. Bean because he's, <laughs> yeah. he's not a beautiful man. He's he's lovely, but like I think his acting is one of the things that makes him yeah. just so like captivating. And I remember I loved him as a kid, and I was yeah. just he's so much fun and so charming. And, yeah, and I think he's really got like a ton of skill as well. Yeah, I even though I, I don't know anything about acting, like I couldn't. Yeah. How would you recommend someone like some kid in they're in year nine and they want to their dream is to be an actor, but they're not sure. They they don't know. What would you recommend for them to go and do? Um, just just go and audition for little things and mm. have fun in drama class yeah. and to just constantly be working at it and I mean it doesn't it doesn't happen overnight, right? Yeah. Like nothing. But if you yeah, just like that community theatre thing we were talking about, you can go and audition for little things like that. Mm. I mean you'll have your school productions and, yeah. um yeah, it's just holding that passion and not letting yeah. it kind of I don't know, fall away or whatever. Mm. Like, there's always going to be ways you can push it, and you can always talk about it. You can yeah. watch movies and watch TV shows yeah. and feel inspired. And mm. yeah, I think it's just keeping, keeping on, keeping on. One thing that I've been wondering about is how do you like handle rejection when it comes to an a, a part? Like, because I assume like it's a hard industry. Like, it's not something you can just hop on into. It's not like oh, actors wanted. Like, mm. I feel like it's 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 hard as fuck. How do you deal with like the rejection when it's a big part or when it's like even if it's a smaller part and then you get rejected or like all those sort of things, how do you deal with that and how do you sort of take that on board but not let it like let get you down sort of thing? I think a lot of people talk about experience and like the value of experience and mm. uh, in a way people can like use use that and like say, oh hey, you can do my short film and like yeah. experience is so valuable, but really like it's not it's not hugely valuable like mm. continually like in the start it's great like having that experience mm. but you reach a point where you've got to like 
you know, you've got to start getting paid yeah. <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. You really like do. Um, yeah. And yeah, dealing with rejection, it's like, yeah, you just, I think when I, when I go into it, I always think like, it doesn't really matter the outcome. Mm. I have nothing to lose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just going to give it my all. Yeah. And I leave with a headspace of, I did my best and like, that's enough. Mm. And I think it's, um, then, then regardless of the response, it's always going to be positive because mm. like, sorry, you didn't get the part. That's okay. Like. I did my best and that's all that matters. Mm. So it's just, yeah. it's like so simple, you know, it's like a little bit cheesy, but yeah, but simple. It's, it's like, like always just given. your I best. I feel like a lot of people, especially in our sort of demographic, like especially like ambitious, uh, ambitious, 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 okay, that word, yeah. um, <laughs> young people, like I feel like we see all these things, so social media, blah, blah, that sort of rant, but mm-hmm. like we all have this like thing like, okay, I'm going to be the best and it's like, yeah, how do you sort of manage those expectations and realize like, okay, I'm not going to be an A-list actor in like three days. Like how do you sort of keep it sort of grounded? I guess it is hard to, when you don't see results and stuff yeah. like that, like that is always hard. And I think it's, yeah, just, um, yeah, just really kind of believing that it is what you want to do. Mm. And I mean, it could, it can always lead to something else. You might, yeah end up doing like a I don't know assistant directing somewhere on like yeah. some little show and then you realize that's what you want to do or yeah you might write a little piece or something like it can always lead somewhere else and yeah I think it's important to come back to where you started and to why you started mm. and to hold on to that how do you sort of keep that in your mind because I know like for a lot of people that want to do this kind of thing like I think when little kids are like six and they're like, hey, I want to be an actor, but it's like, <laughs> they've never done it. And it's like, there's all these sort of things. How do you sort of keep that whole, like, sort of mindset in mind? Of? Like, of the, of sort of like balanced expectations and realizing like, you're not going to be Jesus at like day two. It's like, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know. It's like a, yeah, Balancing the expectations is, I think you need to like have expectations of like, uh, of like yourself mm. and, and like keeping it realistic and mm. like having this amazing, amazing dream and goal, mm. but being able to separate like the dream from like reality and like right now mm. and um, like realistically in the next year, like yeah. where am I going to be? Like how... Like, in the ideal world, how could I get to my dream in, like, mm. the next year? And then is that realistic? And, like, you could turn a corner and something amazing could happen. Like, yeah. that's just the, how, the industry. But, yeah. yeah, I think it's just making sure you know the difference between, like, a, a dream yeah. and where you are, where you're going, and what you're doing. Mm. And just, like, being real with yourself. Yeah. But not in a negative way. Like, yeah, I think Still it's, being positive with it. It's very important because... I feel like if you if you focus too much on the dream or the ultimate goal, then that can just lead to even like depression, like yeah, shit like that. Yeah, just disappointment. Like, you have this high expectation, mm. but you're hitting so low. Yeah. And you've got to you've got to start hitting low. And yeah. when you're hitting that expectation, you're going to be pleased with yourself, mm. and then it can work out. You know. Yeah, I feel like it's definitely like keeping things real and keeping like mm. realizing what can happen and like yeah. like you could blow up one day, but it's like right now you're not. Yeah. You, you, yeah. And being happy with the the small stuff and like stuff like that. Do you find like I'd like to touch a touch a little bit on Suka. How do you say it? Suka? Soika. Like Soika. S- soy milk in a car. Soika. Soika. Okay, yeah. sick. How did what was the idea for this and how did that start? Because it's quite a cool thing. It's like I think they're all very creative and they're like they're all very like it is quite like unique and I quite I quite like that because I think your creative style is in like every one of them and you can sort of see that. Yeah, right. Um, well, it started with me being like, sweet, I'm not at uni this year. This yeah. is my first year out of high school. Yeah. How can I fill my time with a new creative outlet that's mm. going to like allow me to do lots of different things that I've never done before? Yeah. And I was thinking like screen printing. I was doing it for my brother's band. And I was like, yeah, yeah this, is, this is sick. Like, yeah. I want to do some screen printing for the rest of my life. Um, and then I looked into it. And that's hard. That's really hard. There's so many places already in Auckland mm. 
that screen print on like a massive massive scale and yeah. they, their costs are so low yeah. like any band could just jump in and go to them like I don't know like and then like the actual cost of it all and then I realized oh hang on I put patches on things and um, I was like oh how do you make a patch and then so I just looked it up and then yeah the rest is history I just started making it yeah I, yeah it's just like really wanting a creative outlet mm. and because I had to learn how to make a website and like mm really simple coding yeah and then obviously um i have the software and like yeah. learning how to use that and then there's the practical side of it mm. and then there's like packaging and like social media yeah there's a lot of things that i've never done mm. and so i was like sweet i feel like it's a very it's good fun. like project to take on because since there's so many like crazy aspects of it that you wouldn't really like think about like the marketing the social media the actual yeah. production like and yeah, I'm still discovering things. I just yeah. go, okay, hang on. I need to think about that too. <laughs> yeah. How did you sort of get around and like figure out those sort of aspects? Of, of like marketing? Or yeah, like, like all, all the aspects of like, how, when did you sort of realize the, the scope of the stuff that was actually like important to do and like right. that sort of stuff? Well, I started thinking about it uh, like doing something maybe this time last year yeah and then it took me a, maybe four or five months to actually do the research mm. to look into it all and to, yeah to figure it all out yeah and I guess like you would look at one thing and then think oh wait how does that affect like this thing and yeah like, there's a real trickle down of, mm. like you do one thing and then how does that affect all those other things you had yeah. had just had in place yeah and um, yeah how do you go about thinking of like the idea for a patch because they're all like they're quite diverse and like it's it's like i wouldn't even know what to put like like i would just be like okay podcast logo on the patch like cool yeah like um yeah i i i just like walk around and sometimes i'll have a funny pun in my head yeah or i'll go oh i really like eating ramen why can't that be a patch <laughs> yeah. or or um like i think about ripping off brands and then yeah like like a supreme patch or oh, yeah. um, what's that one like comms de garçon or whatever I you know the little love heart like it's like some like amazing designer brand or something oh yeah and just like yeah just like having these little seeds mm. and just constantly thinking about it mm. and then thinking about like oh what am i inspired by right now yeah like my very first patch i made was a brain patch yeah and um yeah, I was thinking about like all my friends who had just gone to uni. Yeah. And I was like, oh, they've all got brains. They're using their brains. Yeah. So then I just made a brain patch. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, I think it's fun just following a creative impulse and yeah, um, yeah just having having a good time with each other. Yeah, one. and just like the thing that I really like about like the podcast and like stuff like that is you can like literally, if you want to make X and Y, you can make X and Y. And like, yeah. I found it's quite cool. Do you like, have like any of your patches been like, where you've just sort of thought of this thing and you're like, I actually want this patch just for myself. Like, <laughs> do you find it's quite like, like you'll see a thing and you'll be like, I want that. So you just go and make it and then like, you're like. Yeah, well, I think there's a lot of, like I'll, I'll make a patch just because I just kind of want it. I want yeah. to like try it out. And then hopefully other people do as well. Yeah. Um, like I would wear every single one of my patches. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I, I do see stuff and I go, oh, yeah, I, I would like to do that. Yeah. But then it comes down to, like, like theft and copyright mm, and, yeah. um, like, what you're allowed to do. How do you go around, like, that sort of thing? Because that's kind of, like, that's always, like, the scary bit. Like, for podcasting, you can't really, like, copyright steal anyone unless you literally, like, follow their words on a podcast or something. Yeah, like, you, you, you basically can't. Yeah. Like, how do you, how do you, like... I've always found this quite a hard line because none of the like work I do goes into that realm of like yeah. it could possibly be copyright infringement. Uh -huh. How do you sort of figure out like what is originality and what is stealing? Because that's like always right. a hard thing. Yeah, I think you need to be careful of like what is inspiration. Yeah. Because sometimes people take inspiration so literally mm. they are basically stealing someone else's work. Mm. Like it, 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 like stealing their style or or. I don't know being too inspired by something can kind of be dangerous and like mm. making sure you know like what is too much or yeah um and just still just letting yourself be kind of um passionate and putting your own like little twist on it or mm. whatever but you, you you it's still 
has to come from a place of yourself. That's what yeah. I think. Like, you can see all these people and be like, oh, wow, you're doing cool stuff. You're doing yeah. cool stuff. Now what do I have to show all you guys? Mm. And, um, yeah, I guess, yeah, that's where it comes from. Yeah. I always found, like, I had this guest on, and he sort of pioneered, like, he was the first person to do these kind of Instagram stories where, like, it's sort of, you don't film it on your phone. You film it and edit it on a camera, but you flip the camera. So it's like in a, oh, okay. in a oh, yeah. sort of that sort of aspect ratio. And then you would edit them all and make them all nice and pretty and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then he got super famous, like, thanks to that. And oh. that was his, like, thing. And then, like, he's, his sort of philosophy on, like, the... Like, because all, all the people would copy him, sort of, like, copy in quotations. But it's, like, it was very inspiration-based. Like, it, it, I don't think... He doesn't think it's stealing, and he doesn't think it's, like, copywriting or, like, stealing yeah. his work. Like... A lot of them, I think, they try and emulate his work too much. Like, when you look at their work and you look at that, it's very different. And it's, like, it's very, like, you can see it, like, they also almost, like, like, they've tried to copy him, but then didn't quite work, and you can kind of see. Yeah. Well, if you look at, like, some of the greatest, um, like, broadest creators of the last, like, few years, like, like Casey Neistat, Yeah. He's, like, huge on YouTube, Mm. and his style is very much his style yeah but you can see so many ways it's influenced oh, yeah. everyone else and like yeah. there's so many like similarities if mm. it's just like the soundtrack or like yeah i don't know the way it's edited or it, there's there's so many ways it can like be it's you can you can clearly see that it's had a massive effect on like mm. the youtube community if that's what you call it yeah and like just like vlogging culture like yeah. Yeah. everyone's doing the same transitions and then like i feel like it's a lot of like follower culture and there's some other guy that yeah. everyone was copying yeah. is it similar in acting like do a lot of people sort of like see one great actor and then they sort of follow his style because I think one thing that I really like about your style is there's no one that I'm like oh it's kind of like this person like it's it's Doug like it's not <laughs> like it's not like a bit of Leo Donadio with, yeah. with um, yeah. whatever yeah, yeah. like it's it's very I quite like how everything that I've seen from you is very like I, I can't be like I can't, yeah it's it's so like Doug and it's so like it's just exactly what I would expect yeah like it's not like yeah well I think like me as a person I've always tried to be really original or mm. like really kind of trying to think about like what I want and mm. like how I want to see it yeah and like trying to care less about what everyone else thinks mm. uh, I remember like being in high school and like some of my friends just kind of like, like, being stink because yeah i was um like really conforming or something and like Mm. that was like a like that was a problem or something yeah and i was like so unhappy for me like it was really yeah not the buzz but as soon as i got into a space of um like what do i want like Mm. how do i want to look how do like how do i want to dress how do i want my hair to be how do i how do i want to like do this little scene on stage Mm. like um yeah i think i've always wanted to be a really uh, original person yeah i think it's really satisfying as well having like doing something that's um original and knowing that you mm. did it and 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 like it's all yours it's and knowing that like there's it's not in any way influenced by anyone else and yeah, like yeah did you, did you ever struggle with like sort of figuring out and like sort of like the whole high school judgment thing because that's like such a hard thing like i was always so scared of doing shit in high school mm. and then like the moment I left, I sort of realized, like, oh, fuck, it doesn't matter. Like, it just, I sort of realized how little the judgment of my peers mattered. Mm. Like, how do you, how did you sort of, and let me know if we get too personal, but. Go ahead. Like, when it comes to, like, being yourself, did you ever, like, were you ever sort of scared of that? Because I found, like, for myself, for a long time, I was scared to show, like, the music I listened to and, like, the clothes I really wanted to wear and, like, all that kind of shit. Like, were you ever sort of... Did you ever sort of have those kind of feelings? Yeah, I think there's a real kind of culture around, um, like, what you what you think of, like, your friends and, mm. and, and what you think of everyone else. And mm. um, I guess it's affected everyone. Like, it, everything does, I guess, like that. Mm. But, um, yeah, I think... Hang on, what was the question? <laughs> how, like, how, how has the... How has, like, 
the fear of the judgment of your peers sort of affected you over the years and has that ever like limited your like actions right yeah well i guess um i don't think it's affected me too much like Mm. i I guess i'd like to say that Mm. but um yeah no i i think that all my friends have been like really good and really supportive and um like you support their kind of their ways of expressing themselves Mm. and i think it comes down to like communication and understanding and like someone like your friend might have a really say like conservative view or a really left-wing view Mm. but as long as you just sit and go okay cool yeah that's sweet like i'm not going to judge you i'm going to sit here i'm going to listen to you yeah and like it doesn't matter what you think because we're still going to be friends and i think there's a real culture around calling people out and to um really shame people and to to say like hey man I don't like you. I don't like what you just said. Yeah. And then not having to um, deal with those consequences. Mm. I've talked about this like with a lot of people about yeah. this this thing of of, of attacking someone and yeah. then not having to deal with anything. Like just that's it, and just yeah. making that person feel like shit. And then yeah. sweet, I have no consequences from that. Yeah. I think that's a really dangerous kind of spot we're in right mm. now. Like generally. Yeah. Right. I think it's quite like. I feel like there's this whole culture of like this is what is correct and then if you deviate outside of this norm you are a nazi like (laughs) it's very like it's it's scary and it's like i I, I don't like it and but yeah i think i think it's hard to be like someone right now yeah it's really there's so much political correctness and there's Mm. there is so much yeah calling out Mm. and there's just so much constant like I'm right or, or, or listen to me before mm. you speak or yeah. there's always like there's there's so much kind of conflict or yeah. or something and the world would just be so simple if everyone was friends. Yeah. Like, I think that's like one of the beauties of podcasts is like I think one of the best like kind of podcasts is where you sit down yeah. even if you have opposing views. Like yeah. I think Joe Rogan's a great example of this. He's a good facilitator of good debate or good conversations mm. without like lowering to the point of attacking like or like you know if you ever get into an argument and then it gets to the point where someone just starts using insults like that's when it has deteriorated past the point of usefulness yeah and i think exactly. it's, it's completely counterproductive for everyone involved uh-huh. makes everyone feel like shit and it's just like no one likes it like how do you sort of go about finding those people who like support you and like don't if you do something they they don't Judge one thing you? That, yeah but also like i found it quite hard for a long time finding pe- like and figuring out who the people are that like if you do something or progress they won't be jealous or angry or like or like almost resentful that you're doing well sort of thing right like the tall poppy syndrome i don't know what that means what is that that's like a new zealand thing where like if a New Zealand is doing well, like Lord or something, oh, yeah. and you like tear them down. Or yeah, something. it's kind of a. You should look it up. Yeah. It's interesting. That sounds quite. That sounds quite like. Familiar and quite like. I've heard. I've only heard this the saying before, but I've like never really. Yeah. But yeah. How do you go about finding people that support um, you and like? I think I think the art community like definitely is just very, very open and mm. very chill and is yeah. like always wanting to have crazy political discussions and like mm. they're more than happy to yeah and um yeah i think that needs to be embraced a lot more of just it, it's like okay to yeah what you just said like it's great to sit down and have opposing views and just talk about it mm. like that's great like there's not a lot of people that would do that in a kind and respectful manner yeah like it's back to that thing of like Ooh, i'm gonna call you out mm. on like what you said like mm. what about me yeah what about what about what about my thoughts yeah have you thought about this though you're wrong yeah you know it's like and like i lame. think a ma- and a very important thing is um like everyone's literal perspective i used to think that was a load of shit like i used to think oh everyone's perspective is like not important because this is right this is wrong and it was very like it's something has to be right right but it's like i feel like i've realized more and more that like everyone literally does have a different perspective and something is right to something at someone else yeah and it's very like everyone has their different opinions for their own reasons mm. and i think like 
it doesn't need to get to the point where it's like no you fucker like how dare you say <laughs> yeah. we don't need guns like yeah. blah 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 like i think you're entitled to your different view yeah but engaging with someone else with a different view yeah it just needs to be done in a nice way mm. i feel like it's very hard like for a person to get to the point where they will be they will easily engage in that conversation and feel happy and like good in that conversation not feel like they need to attack or anything like that but i think a good thing is like if you can get to that point that's great mm. but then another thing is like be okay with the person changing your views like if if yeah. either and be okay with your views being like be okay with changing their views and try and change their views if you think you're right but yeah don't be like trying to force them to change or whatever yeah. but like if you see their argument like if you think like okay my argument is probably actually wrong yeah then like like i don't get into many of these conversations i, I try yeah. to like with people i try not to get political because i think i have like reasonably different views like i think like i'm after like reading all this like entrepreneurial shit like all those books are like entrepreneurial mm. and my whole like life viewpoint is like work harder like just stop caring like yeah cool. but i feel like one thing that i struggle with realizing is the different perspectives of people who don't, can't just work harder and get like get out of things and do that sort of stuff because i feel like a lot of the time it's not just about the pure hours amount hours of work you put in like i feel like there's positions where you literally can't get out of it no matter what you do mm -hmm. but then i feel like then like a lot of i have a tendency to go back to the whole like oh it must be predicated on what they've done previously and like they've set themselves up bad or whatever and like yeah i find it hard not to be not to be like i guess judgmental would be like that sort of thing and i'm trying to I'm trying to focus a lot on just not caring like mm. and not being like yeah i know what you mean yeah i always find it hard to like just be be objective not like like that's one of my favorite things about podcasts is you can have this very objective conversation that doesn't focus on my f emotions aren't involved in the conversation just mm. like my opinions and the facts mm. like that's what i think creates quite a good conversation yeah right yeah i think it's hard being like a, a young person mm. and engaging in political discussion mm. without like it being uh like aggressive or yeah or, or or just like unnecessarily intense yeah like there's like if you think of any political discussion you had in high school yeah there was like i'm betting there was many that you didn't want to speak up on yeah like, yeah in English class, like feminism came up, and it's yeah. like, oh shit, I'm a man. Yeah, I can't speak on this subject. Mm. We're in, we're in, in truth, mm. you totally can. Mm. You're entitled to that, and it's okay. Yeah, as long as you're not attacking someone, and yeah. you're standing up and saying, "Hi, yes, I have a view." Yeah, and that's okay, and yeah. like you can listen to me, and mm. I can listen to you, mm. and we can gain from that. Mm. Like it's all right if you have a different view. Yeah just like what you were saying yeah. like two people have different views mm. and you don't necessarily have to like turn each other it's more about like explaining why you have that view and then like you explaining why you have yeah. your view and then you can understand each other's sides but still believe in what you believe and mm. that's like good and fine but as long as it's just chill as long as it's respectful yeah and like there's a point of understanding not a point of like aggression yeah you know? because like the, I don't. I don't think I've ever witnessed a case of someone where the argument has degenerated to the point of of insults, etc., and then it has progressed to a nice, happy resolution. Like, it's yeah. it's never like maybe that'll be days later or whatever. But it's like the the most beneficial to both parties is when both people completely understand where their competitor, quote unquote, or whatever, yeah. like the opposing view is coming from. And I think that's like. Mm. it's always good to, to keep that in mind and to keep to keep open-minded yeah and i think it's definitely. always it's always quite hard to be like open-minded nowadays because i think everyone's like i was listening to something today i think it was joe defranco or something he's like a um youtube fitness guy yeah and like everyone's in the different camps in the whole fitness thing and it's i think the best way to sort of approach anything is to go with it 
go at it with like the facts that you believe to be true and then mm. try and disprove them cool but then like try and be very like objective and unemotional and like don't try and like be insulty and just never yeah. never degenerate to that yeah right totally yeah good. <laughs> when it comes to balancing your like normal stuff like acting like like soika yeah <laughs> and uh, like all that and like being a human being how do you go about doing that because i always find for myself i always struggle a lot with taking that time and not, not feeling guilty about that time yeah because when i was a kid i was like as you know like i was huge in video games like i was madly addicted to video games like oh, yeah. fuck like i would play like six hours of runescape a day like <laughs> yeah. it was crazy and i was like doing school as well and it's like now I'm like sort of as the mindset it's like oh work 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 but then I'm trying to especially this year trying to get back to more of like okay you can take an hour to just chill uh-huh. how do you sort of manage that um well I, I think that there's a lot of pressure as like as people or young mm. people specifically yeah is that it's to to like there's a culture around definitely like making progress all the time and to always be working on things and yeah. to always be like like what have you done at school today yeah like it's this it's this thing of like what have, what do you have to show for yourself like, yeah and i think we need to forget about like constantly having to prove ourselves to like other people and to like our parents like that's a huge thing for us like mm. like showing your parents yeah sweet i'm not at uni but I swear I'm making progress. Mm. <laughs> like, I, I'm still yeah. going somewhere. And um, you don't always have to be going somewhere. You can chill out. You mm. can hang out. You can work two days in a supermarket and, mm. like, have a good life. Yeah. Like, I think, yeah, you just got to, you've got to, you've got to take time for yourself and you've got to think about your needs and yeah. to not worry that you aren't making progress. Yeah. Like, you're, you're allowed to have productive lulls or... Mm. Um, you don't always, always, always have to be, like, killing it. Yeah. When it comes to, like, not going to uni, it's, like, there's this whole culture where I think, like, when it comes to uni, my philosophy is, like, if you don't like your degree, don't fucking do it. Like, you shouldn't go to uni just to go to uni. Like, I think it's, like, especially if your parents are paying, then maybe cool. But, like, if your parents aren't paying and you're taking debt just because you feel like you have to go to uni because you should be judged, like, fuck that. No, like... Yeah. Stop it. It's it's just like that is just a whole road of pain. But then the people that are like in those situations, for them to jump out of uni, mm. they're going to be like, "Oh damn, what am I going to do now?" Mm. Like they get a full time job. Yeah. They they may not be happy with that. They, yeah. They don't want to work in like a new new world for yeah. <laughs> seven days a week. Yeah. Or whatever. Like, and I think for, definitely for those people, mm. like ninety percent of them will feel like they've stopped. They're not making any progress. Yeah. And it just comes back to like their parents and mm. their friends and their family and mm. their and the people around them and their high school friends. Like, oh, what's Jimmy up to? Like, yeah. Oh shit, he dropped out of uni. I haven't heard about him since. Yeah. Like that's okay. Like Jimmy can do whatever he wants. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I think for those people, like they're definitely feeling uh, restricted and like in yeah. terms of what they're allowed to do. Mm. Do you ever feel? Because I feel like for myself, there's a lot of like sort of adult judgment mm. like my parents are pretty good with it they don't judge too much they don't really like they don't really give a shit if I like I'm productive 24-7 but like more just from like general people like there's always this fear of like for example with the podcasts or with yeah. work or whatever like feeling like oh the podcast is just this random thing or etc and then uni is the real thing like yeah. and then sort of feeling like do you ever feel like since a lot of what you do is quite creative do you ever feel like like almost scared of looking like you're not doing anything because it's oh, so yeah. like like it's not uni like it's not like this linear path it's like it's very creative and it's very like it's almost it's very risky it's like a hundred percent yeah I, I think i do i i definitely do worry that like i'm not i'm not i don't know doing the right thing or yeah like i'm losing time or something yeah but then it just comes back to that thing of like i shouldn't worry about the amount of progress i'm mm. making i should just worry about like right now at this mm. minute if I'm feeling good yeah and I feel like if it's the thing I feel like the complete wrong decision is to do the thing that you don't want to do yeah. like it's to waste time on that because it's like yeah if, if acting is your thing and like it's like 
you, you have two decisions. You have one, do the thing you like, or two, go and be an accountant or something. <laughs> if you love if you love accounting, that's cool. Yeah. But like, it's kind of I think it's like Gary V puts it very well. He sort of says like, basically, if like the 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 after you graduate high school and hopefully hustle in high school, cool. But like after you graduate high school, it should be the riskiest time of your life. Right. Because it's like figuring it out. Yeah, and like if you do that if you just be risky and do shit that other people are like scared of doing you'll be the one who ends up doing this shit that you love and I feel like that's what like that is very very important Mm. and I feel like that can that can bring a happy life which I think it's something that I'm trying to focus on more because I remember when I was kid I was focused on money I was (laughs) like oh yeah I get that money but now I'm kind of like classic yeah it's kind of like yeah why does like I feel like that I've witnessed it like money doesn't really like it's very like cheesy but it really doesn't bring happiness like yeah. it's cool past a certain point but and i think like if you're po- if you're in poverty you want money yeah because mm. you like fuck that <laughs> but it's like nah like i th- feel like you, i love how i love i love like when i see people like you like you're bucking the trend and you're doing shit that's like it's scary and it's like you don't know if you're going to succeed. Like, you might end up being Leonardo DiCaprio, but it's like, you might not. And it's like, it's scary. It's like... 100%. It's a it's, it's very, like, scary thing. And I think it's good to see, like, you're not just, like, conforming and not just being like, okay, I'm just going to do this because yeah. this might would not work out. Like, this, this might not. But, like, yeah. I guarantee if you put in the work, something will come of it. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, something's always going to come yeah. of it. And I think it's fun not conforming or like yeah. not doing the norm. Like yeah. you're going to discover so many new things. Like, mm. like I have. It's so interesting. And like me as a person, I crave like creativity mm. and, and freedom. Mm. And if I was stuck in uni or stuck in a full time job, and mm. poor, I wouldn't have like. Yeah. I'd be tied down. You know? Yeah. I, I want to be free and I want to be creative. Yeah. And that's not so good for my bank account. Yeah. <laughs> But that's all right. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm happy. Mm. But it's like staying motivated and like staying like in your initial goal, mm. you know, like always coming back to why you're there and why you're doing it. Mm. And making sure it is like still coming from a place of passion. And yeah. Like want. Yeah. And not like drifting into this like realm of like, okay, I have to do this or else I'll be yeah. too poor. Like, yeah. Hard out. And being like scared. What would be... I'll finish off with this. What would be your final piece of advice for the young kid in high school who wants to be an actor? They want to do this sort of stuff. They want to be a creative entrepreneur. They want to do all these cool creative things. What would your advice be to them? Um, just do it. Like, that's lame as, but yeah. you just, yeah, don't don't let anything stop you or hold you back mm. or um, don't let kind of yeah like the goals and stuff of the people around you mm. to change what you want yeah and to yeah always just be thinking about what 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 you're there for mm. and like what you want to do yeah and, and like, always follow that and keeping that i think it's like it's cheesy advice but it's true like yeah. it's, some it's advice true is to so the core. lame but yeah but it's like it's it's, it's it's lame because it's been said so many times because it's true it's yeah. like it's 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 damn true yeah where can people find you online or where can people find suka on soika and where can people find your plays all that sort of stuff um you can uh find soika on instagram and facebook t-s-u-i-k-a and then just soika patch it'll come up on facebook instagram whatevs um you can find my plays if you just I don't know, add me on Facebook. <laughs> I might say something about them. Um, yeah, you, there's a theatre company called Positive Deviance. They've got an Instagram and a Facebook. It's an up-and-coming theatre company I'm working with. And yeah, just go hard or go home. Boom. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the Student Side Hustle. I would appreciate so much if you would leave a review. If you'd like to hear more of what I'm saying, then I would love if you would follow me on Instagram or check out my other social media all linked in the show notes. And again, I would just like to say thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful evening and study hard.